So here I'm going to revisit box 12.1 in more detail now. So the horizontal axis is uh, output, which is proportional to pollution. So we're forgetting here about abatement. Level of Q pi is here. So that's Q pi. We have the marginal external cost, which is upward sloping, because again, the horizontal axis is output. We have MNPB, that's downward sloping for the same reason. In the absence of government intervention, the level of output is Q pi. The optimal level of output is S2. And what we want to do here is interpret the areas that have marked A, B, C, D, and E on this graph. So first with no regulation. With no regulation, you're at an output level of Q pi. So I claim the profit is A plus B plus C plus D. And the reason is that we're thinking this is the marginal net private benefit curve. As you'll recall, the area under the marginal curve is the total. So the area under marginal net private benefit is total net private benefit. And we're, as usual, as usual in this course, we're identifying net private benefit with profit. Now, I mentioned a long time ago that net private benefit actually is more than just profit. If you want to be technically correct, it's profit plus something called consumer surplus. But I usually do what the book does, which is to ignore the consumers who are buying the output. And so then net private benefit is the same as profit. And that would, that's what gets us profit, being the area under the M and PV curve as A plus B plus C plus D. External cost under no regulation is the area under the MEC curve. So it's C plus D plus E, which is what I have here. Uh, external cost, C plus D plus E. All right, so that's under no regulation. How about, whoops, with a pollution tax? So with a pollution tax, I'm talking about an optimal pollution tax. Let me make that clearer. Oops, wrong for a second. So with an optimal pollution tax, th this is the optimal tax. You know that the level that the firm chooses will go along the, its MNPV curve, so it's going to be S2. In, uh, I want to find out what remains of profit. So profit used to be A plus B plus C plus D. Well, now D disappears because output falls. So you don't have D anymore as part of profit because because output has uh, output has disappeared. Th that level output has shrunk to, to S two. Then B plus C are the pollution taxes paid to the government. So B plus C, that's not part of profit either. Remember the 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 tax rate is this. And the amount of money that's taxed, the, I mean, the output that's taxed is S2. And so B plus C is the, is the total tax revenue. And that's the reason why, just get rid of this. this. 
only A remains as profit. So profit used to be A plus B plus C plus D, but D disappeared, and then B plus C was taken by the government, so only A remains. And so firms really don't like taxes, and this polluting firm does not like a pollution tax because before it was making A plus B plus C plus D, and now it's just making A. So it really does not like that. External cost, by the way, is C here, whereas before it was C plus D plus E. So external costs are shrunk a lot, and obviously that's that's the reason why the firm has imposed the tax in the first place, in order to shrink external cost. Okay, let me just uh, erase some of these. How about with the standard? So with the standard, in terms of profit, I claim that profit is A plus B plus C. D disappears again, because even under the standard, the output falls, and so that amount of output is not produced. But you still have B plus C plus, uh, A plus B plus C. So D disappears because output falls. External cost is C, which is the same as it is under here, under the optimal pollution tax. Okay, so that's, uh, that's certainly better for the firm. The firm likes the standard better than the tax because the firm's profit is bigger. Switching from a standard to a tax. Well, if you switched from a standard to a tax, with the standard, profit was A plus B plus C, and with the tax, profit's only A. So profit would fall from A plus B plus C to A alone. And the question I want to ask is, is this fair? Certainly, the company would complain if you suggested moving from a standard to a tax because it's going to lose B plus C. That raises the question, can a more complicated tax design alleviate this? And I don't want to go into lots of detail about this, but the implication of all the taxes we've been discussing so far is that they are what an economist will call linear. So you have a, a certain tax rate that's exactly the same for all levels of output. You can design more complicated taxes, though. Here's one. This has a marginal tax rate of 0 up until S2, and then it picks up here. So this says you don't owe any taxes if your output's S2 or less. But once your output starts getting above S2, then for the amount above S2 that you produce, you're going to have to pay taxes at the rate given by this, this red line here. It turns out that for the same reasons we, we said before, the firm is not going to want to produce bigger than S2, more than S2, because the amounts more than S2 only benefit the firm by M and PB, but they cost the firm along the red line. And the firm doesn't want to pay that. It's, it's not worth it. And so this so-called nonlinear tax is another way to get the firm to produce S2. And firms would like it a lot better because under this nonlinear tax, the firms get to keep B plus C. Next thing we're going to discuss in the next video is who actually pays taxes. So we've been talking about taxes and taxing the firm. But one thing you might have thought of is, well, if the firm gets taxed, does that really does that money really come out of the firm's pocket? Or maybe the firm just increases the prices to the to its consumers. 
So let's discuss that in the next video.